Hello, everybody. Welcome to another one of our interesting talks for Psychology Day. Uh, uh, we have a, a presentation by Dr. Jessica Pierce, um, who is uh, uh, a professor in uh, sociology, uh, in the faculty member of the sociology department. Dr. Pierce uh, uh, received her BA in sociology here at UL Lafayette. Um, and uh, earned her master's degree and PhD in sociology at uh, LSU. Uh, some of her research interests include uh, to include gender, online communities, socialization, and social media. Um, uh, her topic today is going to be uh, Lafayette Strong, a sociological analysis of grief and support online. Uh, Dr. Pierce, I want to thank you on behalf of PsychI and the psychology department for coming here and doing a talk for us. I'm really excited to hear this. And keep in mind also that we, since we're recording this talk, that not only are you talking to people here, but there may be other people, certainly will be other people later on who are going to be peeking in on this talk. So, uh, so there are many people I think who are going to be interested in what you present today. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I, I enjoy being able to share what work I've done um, with other departments, with other people, especially uh, this particular study, of course, because uh, many of us have a, you know, not just an academic interest maybe in this topic, but also like a personal interest because of the fact that it happened here in Lafayette. And many of us, you know, myself included, you know, remember kind of watching this whole situation unfold and, um, you know, joining in with the community, the Lafayette community and family members and friends um, of those who were injured or killed. Um, and so, um, you know, there is this connection there. And so I thought this would probably be the most, you know, one of the more interesting um, um, pieces of my work that I could share. So, um, so just to kind of do a brief kind of um, uh, coverage of what happened. So in on July 23rd, 2015, uh, there was a showing of the movie Trainwreck. Um, and during the showing, um, someone opened fire on the audience um, in the Grand Theater on Johnston Street. Um, and um, about, I believe it was nine people were injured. Um, two were killed. Um, one, I believe, in the theater. One later died um, because of her injuries. And then, of course, with the shooter being the third person um, who is deceased um, as a result of that incident. And so there was, of course, a lot of coverage after in the news about, you know, what led to this whole thing and, you know, what his connections were to the community and those types of things. But that's not really what I'm looking at um, or what I looked at with this particular study and this particular analysis. I really wanted to look into um, what was the response um, and what was the response specifically online as a result of this, uh, this terrible tragedy. And so the response kind of generally, of course, by the community um, was that there was many uh, community events, some were uh, larger, um, you know, inviting um, the entire community, um, surrounding areas to come and join in. Um, one in particular was at Blackham Coliseum, um, uh, the Unite Honor Heal event. Um, and the way that this particular event was structured was that it had in-person participants, people who were of course showed up um, um, to participate in real time. Um, but then there was also a, a live stream of this event, as well as a tag board that was created, um, which is essentially a social media aggregator to pull uh, social media posts um, that were tagged with this particular hashtag, Lafayette Strong. And then these were displayed in real time um, as that aggregator was collecting them. Um, again, as part of this uh, kind of more kind of almost interactive um, kind of participatory event. And so it's that data from the tag board that I am looking at in particular. So those posts that have um, the, the, that hashtag Lafayette Strong. 
And so just kind of briefly touch on some of the work that's already been done um, within the literature. Um, and so there's been a lot of, you know, of course, with social media now, there's plenty of studies. Um, but earlier on, there were a lot of studies uh, looking at, you know, online communities, as well as, um, you know, kind of how people were using social media and, you know, Facebook particular platforms um, in response to death, right, or mourning or grief. Um, and then also kind of how they're looking at people coming together in order to form this or to create a sense of solidarity and community. Um, and so there's various you know, topics with this that have been looked at. So this idea of like collective remembering, right? Like we're all sharing together, you know, so we think about, um, you know, the one that keeps coming to mind is um, one that looks at, you know, like maybe particular like celebrity deaths, like that, that's that been something that's been looked at where even though they don't know them personally, they're, it's someone they felt like they had a connection to, um, you know, this particular character potentially, you know, a particular favorite movie. And so it's being able to come together and kind of share information about that as well as, of course, you know, kind of um, uh, cases where, uh, you have people who are family members who are close friends who pass away um, and coming online, going to their Facebook page um, and sharing particular memories, um, funny things that happened, important things that happened and things like that. So there's also this idea of continuing bonds theory that's kind of connected to that, which is um, many people can now use, you know, these social media accounts um, as a way to kind of keep the memories going like they they now have this place where they can go and visit look at the old pictures look at all the old posts and we have many people who do kind of keep these things going um and that people can go back and kind of revisit uh almost like an online memorial right um as a place to kind of go more easily um compared to kind of the traditional view of like you know the gravesite um headstone kind of visit so there's also been um, some other things that, you know, maybe perceived as maybe more deviant, um, even though they're not necessarily intended that way. Um, but this idea of like emotional rubbernecking, right, which is essentially, um, you know, of especially something similar to, um, you know, the Lafayette Grand shooting, um, where it's something that gets a lot, if there's an event that gets a lot of media attention, you know, people may be tempted to go to a social media account or a website, you know, look at pictures, look at the information, um, kind of see what people are posting um, about this particular event and about what happened. Um, and again, it's not necessarily something that in the literature is said as being, you know, like a negative thing, but people who are just interested who, or who may feel a sense of connection for whatever reason. All right, and then finally, we have these elements of presencing and platform vernacular. I don't know if I'm going to talk too much about platform vernacular. I can come back to that one later. Um, but with presencing, that is this idea that online, there's there was one particular study um, that looked at this hashtag, um, which is hashtag funeral. And with this study, the, the findings and the argument was that people are using, were using that particular hashtag. Um, and many of the, the photographs that were found within these posts were selfies, right, which seems to kind of have a disconnect whenever we hear that in our head. But the argument was that they were essentially kind of creating this um, kind of gateway, right, with this post that they have with this photograph, with this hashtag funeral, um, as a way to kind of situate themselves both online among their networks, as well as at this particular um, gathering, at the funeral, at the wake, um, among those who are grieving. And so it also allows those who are online, who are part of those online networks, as a way to also be present, right, um, at that event, you know, in some way, even if they're not physically present, they're able to participate um, in some way. And so this idea of president presencing, it's kind of like kind of having your, your feet in two different worlds, right? Trying to connect the worlds um, as it relates to, you know, um, an event like um, um, a funeral. All right, so looking at um, the theory for my particular study, so I pulled a lot from Goffman's theory, um, looking at dramaturgy, digital impression management. So 
thinking about how, as Goffman argues, whenever we're interacting with others, we're essentially putting on a performance of some sort. It's not viewed as manipulative per se, but it's the idea that we want a particular self, a particular front to be put forward. We want people to think of us as a certain way. And so we talk a certain way, we dress a certain way, we use things around us in the physical environment um, to project this particular image, right? And we also do this online using what he called these sign vehicles. And so that can be like for Instagram, right, which is very photo image based, you know, using photos and now a lot of video um, is that you're including things in the photograph, right, to conjure up what you want people to think of you, right? Um, and so that when it comes to these events, that that is something that is also could also be part of that, right? And so there's this element of like showing without telling, right? Like I can take a picture of myself again, like with the funeral, in some, maybe not at the funeral, right, but maybe getting ready for the funeral or arriving to the gravesite or whatever it may be. Um, and that by posting that photograph, I'm kind of situating myself within that environment without actively talking about it, right, describing it. Um, and then, of course, we see impression management of the dece deceased as something that's also performed, right? Um, that's something that's still, that we do, you know, in real life, um, you know, face to face. Um, with sharing stories and talking about the deceased in a certain way, but it also, of course, happens online as well, right? With the stories we share, the kinds of things that we want to talk about and the ways that we want people to remember them by, um, especially when you have something that's a very public tragedy like this, okay? And so with the questions, as I alluded to earlier, where with these particular messages, these posts, what were the messages that were shared, right? Like when, especially with the images, to me that was of, that was the thing that really piqued my curiosity was looking at these particular images. What kind of things are people sharing images of, photographs of regarding this, this particular event, right? And then what can those posts, including those images, um, tell us about grief, solidarity, community, if anything? All right, so with the data, as I said, it was the, the posts collected by tag boards. So I looked at 493 posts that included uh, photographs and images. So digital images, things like memes also were included within that. So this is more of a mixed methods analysis where I did go through and look at, you know, of course, what all these images included, but then I also quantified essentially what I found um, uh, to kind of get a better grip on, you know, what was present, right? So as far as what I found, so there's three general categories. So we have people, and then we have events, places, and objects. And then the final category are digital and user generated, excuse me, generated images. And so for the second one, as you can see, these include things that are um, even like references to an event, right? So um, it doesn't even have to be a picture of the Unite Honor Heal rally, but it can be an image of something that is a token that they got from the Unite Honor Heal rally, right? Um, it can be other kind of material objects like artwork. Um, it can be things relating to uh, religion or spirituality as it connects to death, um, like you know, taking a picture of like an angel statue, something like that, right? These are all things that were that were uh, part of this this particular category. And then, as I mentioned, with the third category, digital um, images, user generated images. So these include memes. Um, There's a lot of memes, um, screenshots of things that people wanted to share, and then also like groupings of images um, in one post. All right, so just to show you a general uh, breakdown here. So there was um, just a total of 61 photographs of people. And so, again, thinking back to this study that I mentioned earlier, right, with selfies and uh, hashtag funeral, within that study, it was interesting because selfies was like the most common uh, kind of uh, um, form of the photograph, right, in terms of what was included. Um, and so here we see that uh, selfies is a small number. So there were pictures of individuals, right, standing alone, 
Um, but they weren't selfies. They weren't directed. You know, they it clearly wasn't something where someone was directing the image or the, excuse me, the, the camera or the phone at themselves, right? And I think that this does make sense given the nature of this particular tragedy, right? Where it was very much, it very much had a community feeling, right? The community itself, I think, felt violated because of the nature of the crime, right? It was a movie theater, that anybody, you know, once you pay, anybody can be there, right? It's it's not something that we think of as being off limits to everyone. It's We think of it as being pretty accessible um, and something you go to when you want to relax and you want to have fun, right? It's not something um, that, um, you know, we, we think about as someone taking advantage of, right? Um, and so to me, it makes some kind of sense that a lot of these photographs would be of groups, families, and togetherness, right? That kind of giving, again, this sense of community, the sense of solidarity and support within the photographs. So there are also very few pictures of, there were some, but again, there's only seven, of Macy and Jillian, who were the two who um, were killed or died of their injuries as a result of their injuries from the shooting. Um, and I also like to clarify too with um, the individuals, and I have some examples I'll show in just a second, a se excuse me, just a second. But um, I kind of, I really had to look at these images and decide like what was the focus of the photograph, right? Because that became very important with this analysis. And so just to give you kind of a sampling of these photographs that were posted. So you can see here with people, right? Like we have groupings together, right? We have, this is, the one on the far left is, um, you know, you can see as a selfie, right? Um, the one on the bottom left, you know, clearly is indicating the sense of togetherness, the sense of solidarity. Um, and so I was really having to look at what is the camera being, what is the focus for the camera, right? Is it the individual or is it what they're wearing, right? Or is it both? And so you can see that in the next category in just a second. I'll have a, um, you know, a contrast to that. So as far as the objects, events, and places category, so this was the largest category with 310 images. So this included photographs of the actual events, um, uh, photographs of the memorials for uh, the victims, um, other events. So it could be like, it looked like church, like church services, things like that. Um, there was also a lot of photographs of um, these Lafayette Strong um, like signs that were made, um, stickers, any, there was a lot of things with like Louisiana and Acadiana and the Fleur de Lis, um, artwork, jewelry, flags, all these things that showed an explicit connection to Lafayette, the community, Louisiana, right? Um, also a lot of flags. Um, there were some flags that were taken uh, pictures of, you know, like the Lafayette Acadiana flag, uh, people's houses, um, various buildings, um, many of these were relevant um, or located in, relevant to or located in Lafayette specifically, okay, if not Louisiana. So again here, so as I said, at the, that kind of top middle picture, right, it's very clear that the focus of that photograph is the necklace, the shirt, right, not the individual herself. And so the bottom here is the memorial, at the Grand Theater, um, that bottom middle picture, the left bottom you can see is the yard sign. We see um, the flag. Um, you see the top right is the Unite Honor Heal, Unite Honor Heal rally. And then le the top left is an example of that artwork. There was several pictures of people who were um, engaged in artwork to some degree that featured Lafayette, Acadiana, you know, had this kind of element um, as part of that. All right, and then the final category with 122 images were the digital images. So we have, um, as I said, a lot of memes, a lot of repetition of these three particular images. Um, and that's something that we've started to see, I think, more and more of when it comes to these particular events, um, you know, tragic events that happen, you know, in our country across the board. Um, and a lot of people have started to kind of think about, okay, well, like with this particular tragic event, what is it about sharing a meme, right? Um, like, why is that the thing that you feel compelled to share? But the reality is that it's very easy, right? You can participate in this sharing of solidarity and support 
without having to do very much, right? And it's not saying that that's a negative thing, right, per se. It's not kind of labeling it, but just saying that it's it's very quick and straightforward, right? So looking at kind of the, the results of my analysis. So to me, it indicated there was few kind of... Um, kind of indications of this idea of continuing bonds theory, where it was people who were looking to, you know, continue or make this direct connection to Jillian and Macy specifically, or any of the other victims. Um, oh, I guess it would just be uh, Jillian and Macy specifically, um, but it, that didn't seem to be the overall kind of feel of the, these data, right? Um, also, 82% of them had written messages, and these messages um, kind of fit with the previous literature in terms of what people tend to share. And that's this idea of solidarity, condolence, sharing their prayers, right? Um, things that were explicit acknowledgements of community participation in some way, um, expression of emotion. Um, I, it did seem relevant that many people would try and connect themselves somehow to Lafayette within the, te the text part of the message. So um, I used to live there, right? I'm so sad to hear that this happened or, oh my gosh, my family goes to that theater all the time. Um, that kind of trying to make that connection because many of us, again, we're probably putting ourselves into that situation. Like we live here, it's like, oh my gosh, I could have been the one who was in the theater. Like I've been in the theater many times, right? And so you kind of make this direct connection between the possibility, the likelihood, right? And your experience in with the tragic you know, event, trying to make the, the connection there. And so my argument here, drawing on Goffman, drawing on this idea of, pres of um, presencing is that, um, it seemed that many of these posts were with people who were part of the community already, right? Part like in this area, were connected to Lafayette, you know, in real time to some degree. And with this, with these online photographs, um, you know, connecting with hashtag Lafayette Strong, um, my argument is that it's it was like a bid for for participation within this community, not just you know, in real time and face-to-face -face events, but also online, right? And you're also drawing that connection with your networks online, right, to what is happening in real time within the community, right? And so a lot of these objects, right, because looking at events, objects, you know, places um, that using those things as sign vehicles to say, okay, this is me, right? showing the front stage and the backstage, right? So it's not just that I'm part of the community, right? It's that I am grieving. See, I went to this event or I have this thing that is emblematic of Louisiana and Lafayette and this is the symbol. This is the connection that I'm making uh, between these things. This is the thing that I'm using as part of like my proof almost of my commitment to the community, right? And so, you know, drawing on the same idea that the idea is that this offline or, um, you know, real time, real person, um, kind of physical persona and the online self should be similar, right? Because the idea is, um, you know, my thinking was that if you're someone who's living in the community, um, you know, you can't just post a message about how upset you are, that you might also, because you live in the community, you might also have to provide that proof through your participation, not just online, right, but in the real time events that are unfolding, right? So within the setting, situating their presence, displaying the possession of these objects or like props, as you could kind of think of them in this particular concept. And even as I referenced already with memes and with these particular graphics, that essentially those things specifically kind of become like a digital currency almost. Like they're kind of standing in for um, that physical kind of representation um, of the symbols um, of the attachment um, of those individuals to uh, the community. And so through this process, essentially what community, community members are doing is constructing this sense of self, right, online, right, that connects to who they are in, um, in real life um, specifically. So I'll stop there to make sure we have uh, time for questions, comments. Um, so I'm happy to, excited to hear feedback. So if you have any questions, please let me know.
Thank you. And anybody who, uh, thank you so much for sure. that uh, talk. And I, I, it brings back just the topic itself, just brings back uh, uh, a lot of images and memories of that time and yeah. impact that it made on the community at the time. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, those of us who were there, uh, you know, lived through it. You know, we each have a slightly different memory about what was, uh, what was uh, salient, you know, about that. Of course. I wanted to uh, to offer opportunity for anyone uh, to um, to comment. You can either comment through chat, or if you wanted to simply uh, uh, come on in or raise your hand. Um, that uh, comments and questions are all welcome. I think it would be an interesting thing to go a little bit further with this research to look at um, um, the different ethnicities and cultures mm -hmm. of how people reacted to it. Uh, but I must commend you on how delicately you presented the information. It's just so well done. And it was Thank so you. interesting to see. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that's the tricky part with like topics like these, because I don't want it to come off to seem as if there's anything like manipulative, right, or malicious, but it's just the idea of, of recognizing that, you know, no matter what group we belong to or um, community we're a part of, it's like we want to belong, right? And so that means with that belonging, it's like we want to share in the, the, the significant events, right, the things that are happening. Um, and so I think that can be, you know, something that can be difficult to address, but you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a reality. I guess, I guess where I'm going is, wouldn't it be interesting? Again, I'm just thinking about, you know, sure. how to go a little bit further, but yeah, you know, the, the nature, uh, I kept thinking when the, when this trauma happened, of uh, how the Cajun community, how like you know, really mm. seem to have come together, you know, like, and again, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to speak to turn when I mean that kind of stuff, speak I see. in terms of collectivist societies as opposed to individualistic societies, you know, like, like, it'd be interesting to examine like another tragedy, very similar to this that mm. might've happened in another part of the country mm. and, and how their presentation of the information, do a compare well, and contrast. Yeah, might yeah. Be really We've got like the Boston strong movement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. The word, so the, yeah, the showed, wording was taken from that. Yeah, yes, but that that had such a um, patriotic implication about it. Uh, the Boston yeah. Strong one that had such a people really jumped on the patriotic mm -hmm. uh, bandwagon for that. Um, yeah, but it just it's, you just did such a great job with the Thank presentation. You. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, and I, I appreciate that feedback too. That's that's a good idea. I did notice, uh, you know, like and and. Uh, uh, Monica, your comment actually kind of brought this to mind to me. It's like it that given that a lot of the functions uh, that these seem to serve have to do with community building or feeling a part of something larger, not feeling alone and dealing with the tragedy. That I also noticed, and this is anecdotal, so take it for yeah, what. Yeah. Uh, but I also noticed that there were some people, just like for other communicate community building sorts of identity formation sort of events like your local sports team doing really, really well and everybody rallying around mm -hmm. the sports team. You know, you know, if UL actually ever made the final four, I'm sure it would be everybody be going crazy here. Uh, that that there would be some people who would reject the movement because they reject the idea of bandwagon mm -hmm. uh, community building, you know, like I I'm not I'm not part of that. And I noticed that there were some people who react, who uh, over time, um, and I was a little bit surprised by this actually, but, it, but that had kind of like a negative response to seeing Lafayette strong everywhere, you know, posted, you know, that, that they were sort of like, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to join this just because, you know, yeah, recognizing that for a lot of people's community building, but also like part of their identity was, and I'm not part of that you know, yes. joiner. Yes. I mean, I do think, yes, for sure. I can guarantee that, that, you know, as you just described, like, I'm sure that 
there there's that contingent that you know has that kind of like that this is something that is being used as like a way to like capitalize on it right or to like make money or to get attention for your business or you know that kind of perspective and that you know a real you know maybe a real true community member wouldn't do x y or z or um so yes i mean i do i'm 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 sure that you know that particular that particular viewpoint does exist in not just a small number <laughs> but yeah that's a good point did you feel like uh um that the that the data that you collected you know and it's had a little while to sort of you know, for you to live with that and, you know, live, live with that time and the, and the study that you ran. Um, how, if any, can, can you think of any ways in which this might sort of inform how you see these types of events moving forward? What are some of the things that it does? Um, and even like ideas, uh, like uh, how Monica was spitballing, some ideas about uh, studies that people could conduct in the future on this. Yeah, I mean... I think for me, one of the biggest things that I've kind of been like, I guess, ruminating on with this and in terms of kind of like bigger picture, what, how it could be important is kind of going back to this idea of belonging, right? Um, I think this in particular is something that we've seen over the past, definitely two years, um, pro you know, farther back than that, but definitely the past two years where, you know, people want to belong to a particular community and sometimes my sense is that it may not matter what that community is right and so that I guess I could say that in this case you know um I think I would argue that the community aspect is for the better right in the sense that you know it's to coming together for solidarity right for support um, but that, of course, we know there are also other groups that develop around negative ideas, right, and, of course, more kind of harmful ideology, and that my sense is that belonging is probably a very big part of that. Um, you know, yes, belief and ideology are very strong, and that's not discounting that, but I think this element of belonging, you know, again, I guess, as a sociologist, you know, that's probably my bias, but that's my perspective, right? That that belonging is that is a very important component of that and should be, you know, moving forward when considering groups and considering things like that, that that element, you know, should be there and should be considered. Thank you. Uh, Dr. McGivers says, uh, you have your hand up, uh, uh, please. I was just going to say that psychologically speaking, belongingness is a very important uh, characteristic for feeling secure and feeling um, connected to other people, and that it is critical in terms of uh, just things like, I mean, what I study is one of the things I study is college retention. Mm. And that sense of belonging to the campus is very mm. critical in, in maintaining students as students in a university or a college. Um, so it's one of those things that I think belongingness and that sense of belonging to something is um, important, perhaps both psychologically and sociologically. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I definitely, because as I said, you know, like we all, I think over the past two years, you know, especially during lockdown, right, being denied that experience of being around other people, um, you know, even if we enjoyed it for a little bit of time, you know, even myself, I think of myself as being more introverted, but eventually, you know, it's like, I need to be around, I need to be around society. I need to be with other people and have that contact. Um, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a good connect. That's a great connection between the two. I've heard it once uh, said, I think it was partly in jest, but partly serious that what, what the world needed was a threat from space aliens against, against our, our well-being to unite the earth in solidarity against this common, common threat. Uh, you know, sort of said a little tongue in cheek and a little serious. Yeah. Um, and I guess that, that a challenge that I think that that's associated with is, uh, especially in a world right now where 
people are factioning off into different tribes, different perspectives. Um, are there things that we can do to bring about um, connections and sense of community for larger groups crossing over elements of society without there having to be a tragedy such yeah. as, you know, somebody shooting and killing people at a local theater? Yeah. And then, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm not the first person to say this, but I think it's that idea of like finding those commonalities, right? Because essentially that's what happens within this, within this kind of tragedy, right? Is like, oh, we're all human beings, right? We're all mortal and can be injured or killed. And it's like that, you know, at the most basic level, I guess, you know, that's, that's how, that's why we're all coming together is like, oh God, like that could have been me or a family member. But as you said, right, like it's unfortunate that it takes that or it often is that kind of situation um, that's so terrible that we find the commonality over, right? It seems like there should be other things we should be able to find, you know, these common threads with. Floor is still open for anyone with comments or questions. I know it's late in the day. Everyone's brains are shutting down. <laughs> well, I don't want to uh, force the issue. Uh, it, I think that there is one thing that's that's been true for your talk and for several of the other talks today is that it left me thinking, oh man, I just want to have a conversation with this person. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, there, there's always Agreed. to talk Agreed. about. So. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, and anytime. I'm welcome any conversation. So and thank you, uh, uh, Val and MacGyvers and Monica Tozan for very cogent questions and comments. Yes, thank you. I appreciate and, that. Uh, uh, and thank you all for attending. And those of you who are watching a recording of this, thank you for your interest as well. So absolutely. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up our, our talk today. This is our last uh, talk on our first day of our uh, uh, psychology day talks related to psychology and media. And so uh, on behalf of Psych High and uh, psychology department, thank you everybody here for being here and for being interested in these, uh, in these topics. So uh, y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. <laughs>